principles. First in the red corner, he hails from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's wearing white trunks trimmed in red and blue. He weighs in at an even 210 pounds, 29 big knockouts in his 38 wins. The Fighting Cowboy, James Quick. His opponent in the blue corner is from Atlanta, Georgia. He's wearing black trunks with red trim. Tonight, he hopes it's all academic. James Quick Tillis, the veteran at 31, six years older than Holyfield. Holyfield, 18 and 0, with 14 knockouts. And Tillis is 38, 13 and 1, with 29 KOs. It is Tillis wearing the white trunks with the red and blue trim. Holyfield in the black trunks with the red trim. So we are underway. Round one scheduled for 10. And the most immediate thing that strikes you is that uh, the size differential. <laughs> nice punching. Quick tell us looks like a legitimate heavyweight. Big, tall, rangy, and Holyfield much smaller. Tillis uh, saying that he was not intimidated by the scientific high-tech training methods of Evander Holyfield. Easy-going, free-spirited guy. Evander the real deal Holyfield. Boxing's first undisputed cruiserweight champ by knocking out Carlos De Leon in the eighth round back on April the 9th. And on that same card, Tillis KO'd Rod Smith in the second round. But Tillis, since his close defeat against Mike Tyson, 86 has really been on a roller coaster ride. He had a tough 87, five fights. He got knocked out three times. The only thing that you can say to recommend him for this fight is that he gave uh, Iron Mike Tyson a very hard battle. But that was two years ago when Tyson was really learning how to handle big heavyweights like this, trying to find out what to do with a big guy that moves well. Uh, his uh, 87 three losses is nothing to cheer about, and it is a, a mark of his. Um, instability that he just doesn't present himself ready to fight every time. We'll see what he's like today. Is to put it all in perspective, when you talk about that close one with Tyson, you have to qualify. It was two years ago. The crowd will roar anytime Holyfield comes close. Holyfield's objective, as taught by Georgie Benton and Lou Duba, was to jab hard right to the uh, chest. Don't even try to hit the head. Just come in hard and throw punches at his shoulder and throw punches at his chest. Keep him from moving. Keep him from bouncing. He's done that so far. He's got him standing straight. He's not bouncing around. He's not running. Holyfield's doing a good job of controlling any running impulse that Quick Tillis might have. Holyfield says that to win tonight, he must control the fight and dictate the pace. Tillis said he'll come out for accommodations and dance all night. Holyfield totally disagreed, expecting Tillis to come out and do a lot of holding. What we'll see here is how the heavy Holyfield punch works on the heavyweights. Because up to this point, he has gone right through light heavyweights and gone right through cruiserweights, and nobody can take the shots of Evander Holyfield. Let's see what he does with a man who's not known for taking a great shot in the last couple of years. Final seconds of this first round. Round one is history. The first round for Evander Holyfield as a heavyweight. Lou Duva, George Benton, Ace Barada in the corner. Well, one of the things that Evander 
Evander said he would have to do is go to the body, Ferdy. Go right to the chest, right to the front. That you just saw a punch right to the chest. That is exactly what uh, Aduba teaches with Georgie Madden. Punch anywhere but hit something. The easiest thing to hit is a man's chest. Go for it. That's what he did that first round. Kept him from bouncing, won the round handily. Did Evander Holyfield. Tillis's corner. Bo Williford, his manager, handles cuts. Also in there, Lawrence Lakey and Barry Tillis, the younger brother of James. Tillis did not show a uh, or manifest a great desire to fight toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe nor to run. He uh, simply did not much. Round two, it's scheduled for ten. A battle of heavyweights. The heavyweight debut for Evander Holyfield in the black trunks with the red trim. Tillis in the white trunks with the red and white trim, red and blue trim. There's the jab that Holyfield is famous for. He's also famous for his hand speed and his quickness. And so far, it doesn't seem to have suffered uh, despite putting on that extra 12 pounds. That's evident, and that's what you, if you're watching this fight to score, to score Evander Holyfield, progress into the heavyweights. Notice his hand speed. He's just faster than the other guy by just a hair, but he gets it off first, and it lands first. Discombobulating any offensive plans that Quick Tillis might have. Evander Holyfield, an excellent, exquisite boxer, uses the jab effectively. All business, not a showboat. That was more a push than anything else. Oh, that was more sloppiness than anything else from Quick Tillis, who's already starting to be a little sloppy. You, know, you didn't need to do that. Lean, that was too far back to lean into the ropes. He's going to be very careful against Evander Holyfield, or he's in trouble. He's holding his hand up, but he's pulling back from a punch. Evander will eat him up if he keeps pulling back like that because he is not Muhammad Ali. He doesn't have that uh, speed and ranginess to avoid a punch going back. Tillis claims that Holyfield fights off balance. Well, but, well, a lot of that off balance is the um, punching and pushing that Holyfield is doing right now. James Quick Tillis won his first 20 fights, won his first 12 by knockout, thus the nickname Quick. And he used to move a lot quicker as well in the ring. And he said tonight he would like to move in and out side to side. There's a left, a stiff left by Holyfield on the inside. Well, he's going to have to change his name to not so quick Tillis because he's getting outspeeded and slugged. Here's an assault by Holyfield. And the crowd reacts. Capacity crowd of about 5,000 here in the outdoor arena at Caesars Tahoe. Cooling off, making it very pleasant for the fighters and the fans. For one of the fighters. <laughs> the other one isn't having too much fun right now. Tillis, still no offense from Tillis. Still nothing to scare off or hold off Holyfield. Whether he's trying to lure him into a sharp punch, you won't know, but he may find himself on his back waiting for that lure to happen. There was one. What a great example of hand speed. A hard right by Holyfield. That stunned Tillis. And Tillis holding on with nine seconds, eight seconds left to go. Another right as the bell sounds. And after the bell, they continue to go. Richard Steele has to step in. And look out now. Lou Duba and Bo Williford in the two corners are going at it. Richard Steele has to step between the two traders. There's no room in boxing for that. There is no room in boxing for that kind of nonsense. That's hooliganism at any level. That should not be allowed. One of the most bizarre incidents you'll ever see. When tempers flare like that, experienced hands like Lou Duva and Williford should know better than to try to go at each other. That's some sometimes called maturity. Let's look at the end of round two. Let's see how things develop. Well, you can't hear the bell, but you can see that the fighting continued. Duva then held on to Quick Tillis so there wouldn't be any continuous action. Williford misinterpreted that and came in. That should never have happened. Never should that have happened. And here we go. Round three, and this crowd is revved up. Well, 
One of the things it did was wake up Quick Tillis because he's mad. Up to this point, he's just been willing to waltz, to be waltzing Matilda and not do too much fighting. He woke up. Now, I can see if Holyfield continued to punch Tillis while well, he was being held by yeah. you, but that's one thing. Yeah. But Williford could not see that, apparently, from behind and did misinterpret. Well, there are specific rules which go to the conduct of a corner man. He is not to be involved in any brawl, much less precipitate one or start one. They could be in, in line for a stiff fine. In the meantime, Evander Holyfield continues to pick up the face. His hand speed is awesome tonight. So what a wild conclusion to round two. You wonder if something like that could eventually lead to a disqualification with so much at stake here tonight. Well, the two fighters weren't the ones who were getting hurt. It was two older guys that should know better. I don't think their cardiac system is meant to fight at this age. Lou Duba, who is known as the chief operating officer and head trainer, as far as Team Holyfield is concerned, Bo Williford is a manager. Well, both have been fighters, and both are short-tempered men, both of them. And, of course, we've seen that happen with Lou over and over and over again. That's the midway mark, round three. Things really heating up at the end of round two. And so far, this third round, uneventful, uh, relatively speaking. After the second round, it is a peaceful round, but the superior hand speed and ring generalship of Holyfield is vastly, evidently superior to Tillis, who went back to slow motion after a pretty peppy start. One of the tests that Lou Duba and everyone in the United States is waiting to see is how will Holyfield react when he feels a real heavyweight punch. And that was a heavy right by Holyfield. Right to the party by Holyfield that pushes Tillis back into Holyfield's corner. It's that kind of punch to the body that makes uh, Quick Tillis wish that he was back on the range punching cattle. They don't punch back. Back in Gibson Station, Oklahoma, 50 miles southeast of his home in Tulsa. Less than 30 seconds, round three. An attack by Holyfield to the head and the chest. A beautiful attack. Double jab, right hand, hook after it, and followed with a series of combination punches. Tillis covering up well. Another good right by Holyfield.